Okay. If you've seen recent videos, uh, if you're watching these in order or some such thing, or you look in the playlist and look at the ones that were released just before this, you'll see that I've done a run of Tommy vs. Kyle videos. All those were from about a week uh, between each other and were from Tommy's POV. This one is from Kyle's POV about a month after the last video from that set of uh, demos. And Tommy has started this off with a little bit of excuses by saying that just because he's lost 15 in a row doesn't mean that he can suddenly win another one. So Tommy clearly on a bit of a losing streak, but he is going to start off strong on this one. It's going to be very easy, uh, very, very easy, very interesting to see what goes on here. I've literally just commentated Tommy versus Kyle from Tommy's POV. So to see it the other way around and to see how Kyle's going to play this, we're going from a month ago, Tommy was playing incredibly cautiously. Kyle just couldn't uh, manage to string together the the control over the map. He wasn't able to get the items. But Tommy, on the other hand, was. And he was able to play just about well enough in the actual fights. It was clear that Kyle, for the most part, was playing better in the fights. But... Tommy was able to play well enough that the stack advantage uh, won him out the fights. When they went into fights equally stacked, Kyle was winning every single one. So towards the beginning of the game in that one, Kyle took the early lead. Uh, go back and watch it. It's a great game. But I think it was called something like cautious positioning. Now I'm starting to put actual names on them rather than just uh, plays because I'm getting so many from the same people. Also got to clickbait it a little bit, haven't we? Oh, nice shot there from Kyle. Tommy playing just how he played when we were watching his POV in the other game. Playing around the items. Kyle doesn't want to push in there because he knew he was only one shot away from dying. But he had to be around. He had to know when the item was going to get taken. And yeah, this demo is for about a year ago still. And I now know Kyle has a lot better item control so potentially the month between these two Kyle is going to be gaining a big advantage in item control we'll see how the progression is going so it's a good it's an alright stack from Kyle but Tommy's definitely got a really good stack you could definitely uh, you could definitely make a play off of this. But, yeah, absolutely. Still getting hit from Tommy's random predictions. But that, that was something that we pointed out in the last game. Tommy predicts really well where people are going to be. On this map and pretty much every map going. He's really good at sort of shooting shots in general directions. And making them hit. And then when he hears that. Uh, hit sound, he knows where you are. Ignore that massive ring. Five to nothing, the difference in score though, which is incredibly interesting. It's a bit of a. This might break the. Uh, might break the magic of these. People tend to send me demos where they win. Just saying. But Tommy uh, is taking the early lead here. Unlike everything we tend to see from him. Nice shot there. Landing with some of that spam. Kyle's played this incredibly cautiously. He's got to because he's not able to get any sort of stack. Tommy has incredible play on the stack. If Kyle can manage to steal one of these items though and really get a lockdown on that timing, uh, I think he'll have a chance. But at the minute, he's going into every fight slightly battered because you can see Tommy knows where he's going to be coming from. You can see there, Tommy was taking the shots across and he manages to steal the item now. Kyle's got it that mega but he's not going to be able to get off the shots that he needs to against Tommy if he can land probably just one more Tommy manages to take him out unfortunate shooting there whether that um, 
the fight styles manage to get to Kyle's head and he's not able to aim quite so well because he's focusing much more on the other aspects of the duel. His movement certainly seems to have fallen just a little bit. He's not moving around the map quite so fast. He's staying in, more than, uh, staying in one place more often than not. But he has got just that little bit of position positioning Ooh, great shot there from Carl could this be the comeback uh, he's gonna get slapped but still both players super low this is where games can turn when but there's no items up and both players are super low in terms of uh, their stack couldn't quite see if Tommy managed to pick up the armor there. I'm going to predict that he did because he has taken such a long time to go down. Mega health should be up. Beautiful for Tommy. Yeah, he's, he's definitely been talking to Tommy about how Tommy plays and Kojin as well. Kojin plays very uh, conservatively and slower like Tommy does. Both of those guys coming from non zoonotic arena FPS is where speed is... You can't win just based on speed. Like, a lot of Dodger's playbook is being impossible to hit because he's constantly moving. He's constantly faster than you. He's, you can never guess where he's going to be. Um, where... The Quake Live playbook would say, be slow, be steady. Big score difference now. 10 frags the difference. Tommy versus Kyle. Lovely shot there from Kyle. That's the sort of speed we want to see. And I think he does have to up it. I think that's probably going to be one of the things. If you can control the pace, the flow of the game, um, you want to be fast in some parts and slow in others, but you don't want to be predictable. It doesn't. You don't want to be... Okay, every time there's about to be an item up, the pace of the game goes up a bit. Beautiful shooting there, using the blaster. It's often when you've only got one or two items that people tend to use the blaster, when you've only got maybe a Vortex or a Devastator. But it can be so powerful because it is such a powerful knockback tool. Um, in fact, it, it realistically does m as much, if not more, knockback than the... Devastator is spawn camping. So there is a... The, I think the rule on most servers on spawn uh, spawn rule is 90% spawn furthest. Which means you spawn 90% of the time you spawn furthest from your opponent. But that is so predictable. And missing the armor as well, Tommy, in that uh, escape. But he did manage to get out when he missed that armor. So that's probably what he's more trying to do. It is brutal when you see a comeback that comes from spawn camping like that. But it is there is a trick to getting the spawn camp. And now Kyle, he has the positioning and the timing on the armor. Beautiful shotgun use there. Love it. Yeah, spawn forcing in this game can be crazy. The other thing is, so it's spawn furthest. Because this room, if you look, that teleporter, uh, that like water wall thing, that's a teleporter. It's just a teleporter you can see through and shoot through. It teleports you from one side of the, the map to the other. And it's one of the most, com like, see? They've just run around the entire map to get back to that room. It almost feels like a true circle. But it's actually that you just teleport back to the other side of the map. Uh, so, yeah, it means that the spawn, spawn forcing, that's the name for it, warp zone. Yeah, it means the spawn forcing is absolutely mad. Ooh, nice shot from Tommy, but unfortunately doesn't quite have the health to get in. Now we've got 45 seconds left and two frags for Kyle to manage to make it back up. He's been on the back foot the entire game, but he's playing really nicely. Like These are all the things that we've seen from him. 
He's got the control of the items and he's got the speed. Which, it just rolls into that confidence as well. You know, it's, it's really is just rolling that confidence forwards. Massacre. Beautiful shot. Got to find this last one. Is he going to be able to find the frag before overtime comes in? Or is this one going to go to overtime? Tommy's running. He knows he's got five seconds. And now Carl knows the best thing to do is just to force an overtime. And there it is. Back into overtime. Tommy going down. Great shot there from Kyle. Sorry, not Tommy going down. Carl going down and Tommy going into the lead. Nice pick up from Kyle. He's, both players have actually got a really good position. This overtime started with them both being pretty much fresh spawns. And with the items coming back up. So this is almost like the start of the game again. Except more mentally tired and with the benefit of both players playing fast because everybody speeds up when there's an overtime on the line so we're going into this game with a much more fast paced style which is great even tommy's playing fast it's great when you see tommy play fast because when he's on he can play fast and controlled and that really is one of the best things to see and it's one of the most unstoppable styles if you can be Unpredictable, moving fast, controlling all the items. Oh, beautiful duke in there from Tommy. He's just dodging all the bullets, but he doesn't quite manage to dodge them enough with the lower amount of health. And he unfortunately misses the slap, but did get a huge amount of damage off. Five frags the difference with 30 seconds left. Tommy's going to call GG. Fantastic game going on there. Oh, Kyle's heart rate, I can imagine. Absolutely. Uh, but I, looking at this, I don't think... Yeah, Kyle definitely didn't let uh, let Tommy get the frags in the beginning. He just couldn't get control. Uh, and yeah, playing safe, but it didn't work. Tends to not be the greatest thing going. Fantastic game. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Come watch these on Twitch, twitch.tv slash mxcraven. If you've got some games, send them over to me. I'm available, Discord, IRC, somewhere. You'll be able to find me and send me some things. What a game. I mean, that. yeah, that end, it just went. Oh, yeah, it went. Fantastic. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.